What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are about to get up under this ISF and we're gonna look right here in this section and get straight to changing the transmission fluid on this 2008 ISF. All right, so before we get started, let's go through the parts list here. We've got the mean mug washers here. Those are good to go. We've got this Lyle oil fuel filter socket, 24 millimeter part number 133310. So this is a low profile 24 millimeter that we're gonna need for the job. I've got here the Beck Arnley part number 04402372. And in here we have, we've got the gasket for the pan, we've got the filter, and we've got these little guys that go into the gasket. Then we've got this uh, washer here, the part number on this guy, 9030115004. Now I'm going to put all of these parts that are needed to do this job in the description below. And then we've got the good old ATFWS World Standard Automatic Transmission Fluid, part number 00289 ATFWS. I've got six quarts of that here, so let's jump right into the job. So first we're gonna start by removing these 10 millimeter bolts here. That is uh, the cover over this section here. So we're gonna remove that and uh, get right to the pan area. All right, so here we are underneath and the fill plug is actually on the driver's side. So that's the left-hand side of the vehicle and it's actually right there. So this is the setup that I'm gonna use. This is the, uh, the low profile 24 millimeter. That's what we're gonna use this for. And it'd be handy to have a 3 8 tool around with a decent amount of length so that you have enough uh, length on there to turn it. So I've been able, I was able to put it up there, make sure, test fit it, make sure it works. So next we go on here. This is the drain plug. So we're gonna go ahead and drain this. After we drain this, then we'll go ahead, we'll take these screws off here. We'll lower down the pan and we'll finish off with the filter change and the gasket change. All right, so this drain plug here is a 14 millimeter. All right, so we've got the new gasket on there. That's that mean mug part number. Got the new gasket on. We'll put this back up and then we'll get ready to unbolt the pan. No, 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 no. Okay, so we do have one small problem. While trying to get this bolt off, the good old boy broke. So it doesn't look like we'll be able to finish the job completely, but I'm gonna keep working on this pan here. In a previous video, I had gone over the dealer service record. I think it's clear to say that they probably did not touch this pan and change this gasket or this filter because this would have likely broke on them when it was changed. Okay, so I removed the majority of the bolts. Got one left here, one over here. What I'm gonna attempt to do is unscrew the one in the back, kind of tilt it, and let some of that oil drop in to the pan here. So at this point, I'd recommend getting a plastic pry tool and kind of wedging it right in between where the gasket is sitting and give it a nice gentle, you know, work it in there gently and then you'll be able to gradually uh, lower that pan down so the fluid doesn't come splashing out on you. In this situation, it worked out pretty good for me, so just uh, sharing some information there. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so here we are underneath. Here's the filter. You've got one, two, three bolts here to remove. And all of these bolts will be a 10. So we're going to, we're going to go ahead and remove this filter and get the new one installed. At this point, you want to uh, rock the filter left to right. You want to do this gently until it slides out. As you slide it out, you'll start to hear some of the fluid draining out. Once the fluid slows down, you can pull it out, and that way you can avoid getting splashed with all the fluid. So here's the bolt right here that uh, didn't make it. I'm going to have to drill this guy out and get a new one. But let's go ahead and step over here so I can show you something right there. You see that manufacturer? There's a good chance that the ASIN branded fluid might be the same supplier as the Toyota. Just saying. So let's go ahead and reinstall the uh, new filter. All right, so I'm getting ready to install this. Just put a little bit of the uh, fluid on my fingertip here. Put it on this gasket, and then we're gonna get this filter installed. So these four bolts that hold up the filter, the specs for the torque is eight foot pounds. So here's our pan now. I'm gonna go ahead and use some brake cleaner. I'm gonna clean up these uh, magnets right here. As you can see, these magnets probably have never been cleaned. So back to my theory of as to whether the dealer actually pulled the pan down, I'm gonna guess no. Now, here's a clean magnet. Look at the difference. All right, so next up, we're gonna go ahead and take off this gasket. Given by how tight this gasket was, yeah. I'm gonna say probably they never changed this either. So now I'm just gonna get some brake fluid, clean up the edges before I put on the new gasket. All right, so here's the new gasket. We're gonna get these little guys, put them in their spots, and then put the gasket in place. All right, so with the gasket in place, I'm gonna give this pan one last clean and then we'll get it put back in place. Okay, so we got all the bolts in here. Now we're gonna to torque these down. We're gonna to torque them down to 65 inch pounds, which is roughly about five foot pounds. Okay, so now that everything's torqued down, we need to get in the uh, side here, get this fill bolt out and start to fill in the fluid. Okay, so we got our 24 millimeter low profile socket here. We're gonna go ahead and just take off this fill bolt. Okay, so here's the bolt and here is the part that we're gonna replace this little rubber seal here. So we're gonna get that Swapped over to the new one. All right, so here's all the fluid. There's the pump. You know the process. It's gonna take some time to get this thing pumped, so let's get to work and get some fluid pumped into this transmission. Okay, so now that we got all of the fluid put in, we're gonna go ahead and clean up the area before we get that drain plug put back on. All right, so now that we got our drain plug, we're gonna go ahead and put that back in. And this bolt is to be torqued to 29 foot-pounds. All 
All right, so now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna lower the ISF, we're gonna go ahead and get that transmission going so the fluid can get moving in there. We're looking for the fluid to be around 95 to 108 degrees Fahrenheit before we check the overflow plug to get out any excess fluid. So let's go ahead and get that started. So all we're doing for this process is moving the shift lever through the gears to get the fluid moving. Meanwhile, I'm watching here on my screen for the temperature. So it looks like we're gonna have to wait for this to cool down, but we are well on our way. Yep, we're at 101, so I'm gonna raise it up and get this fluid drained. Okay, so now that we've got this drain properly, make sure to change the washer on this drain plug and uh, we're gonna torque it down to 15 foot-pounds. So we got the fluid filled, we drained out the excess fluid, and we took it around the block, drove it around, everything feels good, everything's looking good. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, after doing this job, you know, I've got my own thoughts as to what the dealership actually did in my previous video, what they actually did when they did that transmission service before. Now, with what I did, I feel like everything was done the way that the dealer should have done it. Now, did they actually do that? That's another story, but from what I can see, chances are they probably just sucked out the fluid and refilled the fluid. They didn't even take out and clean anything, no filter change, no nothing. All right, so with that, ISF is done. Video is complete. I'll catch you guys on the next one.